What's going on, everybody? Um, I've been wanting to share something for a while, so I'm going to go ahead and share it now because there's a whole string of um, experiences that I've had that I've incorporated this uh, bit of understanding in. Right? Um, a few months ago, there was a family member of mine that was in church that had been rushed to the emergency been rushed to the emergency room because of some things going on with her back. She had got a pain in her back, fell in the bathroom, and uh, went to the emergency room. And of course, the doctors couldn't do anything about it and gave her pain medicine, you know, muscle relaxer, stuff like that. And um, so, long story shorter, at the end of service, you know, I heard her talking about her back, so I run up on her and I, you know, I asked her to pray for, her. and um, Long story shorter, asked her could I pray for, and actually her daughter actually wanted to pray for. So I pretty much walked her daughter through the whole process of praying for a mother's back, but she didn't want to be touched. So that was cool, so we just pointed, you know, we pointed and took authority like that. And um, the pain was in her lower back. We pointed, and her daughter repeated after me, and... uh I think we prayed for that part twice, and then the pain was gone. But the pain now ran to her stomach, right behind her navel. And I'm like, all right, that's weird. We're going to address it again. And so we addressed it again, and uh, that was good. It was gone. But the pain ran to her left leg. And so, okay, I'm, I'm looking, at, um, looking at her daughter. I'm like, uh, looking at my little cousin. I'm like, all right, look. This has to be a spirit because pain doesn't run. You know what I mean? We're, we're moving it, but it doesn't want to let go. It wants to remain there. So I, um, we started dressing it as a spirit, you know what I mean? And uh, instead of just like a pain, we started dressing it as a spirit. And um, at the end of this time, you know, um, the one we're praying for, she's crying, you know, the Holy Spirit fell on her. She's speaking in tongues and, um, She's rejoicing because it's gone. The everything's gone. She could bend down. She was okay. She's been healed completely, and uh, you know, and and just held and comforted her, and uh, you know, encouraged her a bit, and uh, that was a blessing, right? But I called to check up on her a few days later, and she had an interesting testimony to tell me, which was, um, I think the next day or something the pain tried to come back in her lower back. If she said it, just the way she described it, it was like a little kid trying to get your attention. How it would poke at you. Like, hey, hey, look at me, look at me. And she, it, it started happening. She went to reach her hand around to um, touch her back. Like, oh no, my back's hurting. But she, as soon, before she got her hand to her back, she's like, wait a minute, nope, nope, I've been healed in Jesus' name. And I, and I believe we, um, I, 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 it's been it's been a while ago, and I think I told you, you know, you got to take authority over it if it tries to come back or what have you. Um, but she reaches around and she uh, is about to touch her back because it started hurting. It started because the poke tried to come back in. She's like, nope, nope, I've been healed in Jesus' name. Get out, I've been healed. She took authority over it in Jesus' name, right? And um, she actually said that that happened to her four times before she was completely free of the back pain, you know? So um, that was just interesting. It was definitely interesting and uh, a learning experience, but it's, uh, it's something to know about keeping your healing. You know, you can get healed over and over and over and over again, but it's something about being able to keep your healing. You know, what did Jesus say? Um, first of all, if we, like uh, when he sent the disciples out, uh, they could go door to door and say, peace be unto you. If, you. if your peace rests there, great. But he said, your peace can return unto you, right? Uh, he said, when a foul spirit's gone out of a man, it roams through dry places looking for a place to stay, but then it'll try to come back and get back in to the place where it was. And if we let it in, it's going to be worse than it was before, right? Um, so I just think that's interesting and it's something to note because Jesus often said when he healed somebody, he didn't always. But when he healed somebody, it's like with the leper, he said, okay, you've been healed, go and sin no more. You know what I mean? Now, I personally can't tell if somebody has a sickness because they're sin or this, that, or the other. Look, everybody falls short. Not to say that everybody lives in sin, but everybody falls short, right? But I can, I'm not the one to say, look, um, 
you have, unless God directly tells me you're having this problem because of this, right? But when he says go and sin no more, that's something that we all can take into account, right? Because we can look at, she could, look, she could have looked at that healing she received, and then what is sin? Well, doubt is sin. Well, uh, giving over to the spirit of fear is sin. You know, she could have looked at that and let that doubt creep in, and now she's in sin, and now that spirit, that pain has a way to get back into where it wanted to be. Not to say that she was demon-possessed, but has an attachment. Like I always say, that's the word I like to use, attachment. Like you put a, um, you put a red dot, uh, a laser sight on a gun, or you put a scope on a gun. It's an attachment. It's not in the gun. It's just on the gun. It's just a outside attachment to the gun. But um, I just thought that may be uh, helpful and interesting when we're talking about... That's my kids in the background, so i got to make this short. I just thought it would be interesting when we're talking about healings and keeping your healing. All right, because I have um, more experiences after this where I tell people of this experience that my cousin had, which is a blessing because it, it, just, it just keeps it in the forefront of my mind. So I tell them, you know, look, you have to take authority over if it, if it tries to come back. Every healing, um, the thing doesn't try to come back, but sometimes it does. So if it tries to come back, you have to take authority over it in Jesus' name. Either they will or they won't. And it, it, that's up to them. But Jesus will heal you, you know, when no matter the lifestyle, you know what I mean? But it shows an opportunity for whoever to draw into him, to get closer to him. You know what I mean? I've prayed for several people to live alternative lifestyles, right? And they got healed. You know, whether they can keep their healing is on them. Whether they'll start relying on Jesus to keep them healed, it's up to them. Or are they going to let Satan steal, kill, and destroy as he always does? All right? Till next time, be blessed.